our topic on temperament continues and today we are looking at the types of temperament and we are taking them individually now the goal of this temperament series is that at the end of the day you are able to understand your child's temperament why they do what they do understand what makes them think and what makes them think that way you can customize your parenting templates to meet the unique child you have Welcome to Parenting with Any Mere or Rebel. If you are new here, yay! It's good to have you here. We are a very resourceful community. You want to check our previous videos and get empowered and get fired on. If you are a returning subscriber, thank you, thank you, thank you. You are coming because you are getting value and you are inspiring me. So keep bringing value in here. Do well to share the link of this video to everyone you love every parent you love subscribe if you have not subscribed yet subscribe like leave a comment always feel free to leave your comments in the comment section i'm always always available to take your questions and to appreciate your comments so let's go right into what we do here So we started on the temperament series the other time and we have treated your temperament as a parent, how it influences your parenting choices. If you have not seen the video, just check back. You are going to see it and do well to watch it. And then also we've talked about your child's temperament, what you need to know about it and why it matters. And today we are furthering on your child's temperament. We're talking about the different temperaments there are and we are taking them individually so let's go into it now the very first temperament i want to talk about is the choleric temperament the choleric one mm, the strong-willed temperament the fire starter temperament Ah, oh, parents who have this temperament to children you know that child who is very sweet you think oh he's so stubborn he's so bossy he doesn't listen he wants to have his will all the time yeah it's just who your child is is how he's wired how she is wired is a product of his or her temperament the types of temperament is what we are looking at today and we have four major temperaments we have actually five but four are the most talked about we have the choleric we have the sanguine, we have the phlegmatic, and we have the melancholic. Now, here's what I will do. The fifth one, I will leave it in the comment section if you ask for the fifth one. Yes, because it is not common. Even if you research it, you may not get it. So, we have these four temperaments. And every of these temperaments has their traits. Have their traits. They have their strengths. They have their weaknesses. They have a way you identify them. Now, your child's temperament determines how... Your child will behave. It is a major motivation. It is a major determining factor of why your child does the things your child does. Now, understanding this temperament will help you tailor your response to your child's behavior in such a manner that it will feel fit. Now, this is why you need to understand your child's temperament. And the first temperament we are looking at today is the choleric temperament. So let me share some of the characteristics of the choleric child. They are blunt, they are short-tempered, they are domineering, they are competitive, they, um, they are intolerant, they are determined, they are bossy. Now these are some of the traits these children have. So if you have a child who actually scores high on these traits I just mentioned, talk about determination, they don't give up easily. Talk about um, frustration, intolerance. Nah, they, they get really angry when things are not going their way. Talk about bossy, they want to be in charge. You can be of the park, they want to be in charge, they are dominary. Talk about they want to take leadership positions, they want to be in charge again. You know, talk about they are quick to anger. Talk about um, they, they are assertive, they are bold. Talk about they are, yes, I just talked about they are bold, they are assertive. Talk about they are blunt, they say things the way they are. They are not the ones to originally be afraid. Now, if you have these traits in the child, know that your child is a choleric they are go-getters they want something and they are determined to get what they want and sometimes they can be very manipulative too because they just want what they want 
they always want what they want so it can make them look desperate it can make them yes appear desperate because they want what they want they want to go all out to get it so if these traits are kind of um in your child you know that your child is definitely a choleric <laughs> Now, these traits can either be weaknesses or strengths depending on the events. Let's look at determination, for example. It simply means that if they have a good cause, they are not easily going to give up. That's determination. So let's look at, um, what is it called now? Let's look at boldness, for example. It simply means that in the face of events, they are not going to hold back. They are going to say the way it is. They are going to be bold. They are going to be assertive. Let's look at a competitiveness, for example, because they are also very competitive. It simply means that yes, the desire to be to do to do to do better will push them, will motivate them to get whatever they want, or to be better, or to be to be um to discover the best version of themselves because they are very competitive. Let's talk about being bossy or wanting to be in charge or being domineering. It simply means that if they're in a situation where everybody is laughing, they are going to stand up, pick up the challenge, and they are going to lead the, lead the group and they are going to get what they want to get because they are go-getters. So now these strengths and weaknesses they have can either be strengths or weaknesses. This is why one of the things they need is skills to be able to balance it. Skills to be able to set boundaries around their weaknesses and strengths. Okay, let's look at why a parent and a choleric child may likely clash. Now, everyone has needs. So when your needs are not met, it's a major trigger. Yes, it's a major motivation for bad behaviors or rebellion or anything you want to call it the choleric child has needs too when the needs are not met then there is going to be a friction so one of their needs is need for independence need for autonomy now when parents are always bossy they don't let them feel heard, feel heard they don't let them take decisions for themselves they are always going to clash because the choleric child loves power. They love to be in charge. They want to take responsibility for themselves. They want to take responsibility for their lives. So as a parent, what you want to do is to give them age-appropriate responsibilities, age-appropriate charge of their lives. Yes, I know that you cannot leave them to handle everything because their upstairs brain is not grown, is not developed. So you want to be in charge of major decisions talk about how they use major finances talk about schools they attend talk about their health care if they're not feeling well those are major issues that parents can actually take but when it comes to age appropriate issues that actually concern children you should let them talk about playing with their toys wearing their clothes eating food those kind of age appropriate decisions you should actually let your child take them Another thing you want to do is you also want to bring them into your decision making, make them feel part of the decision, part of the process. They understand the whys, they understand um, why the whys and of course they are part of it. It makes them feel that it is their original decision. That way, that friction will be greatly minimized. Another thing is clear goals are a great way to get the choleric children to, is, is a need for them. They are children, I remember I said they are go-getters and they are high energy children, which simply means that they have a lot of energy. They always want to do something. You know, you see them moving about. So one of the things you want to do, you want to provide them with activities that are goal-oriented so that they don't move about aimlessly because if they move about aimlessly there is going to be trouble for example they are they are they are, they are sorry they are restless they have high energy they are going to be jumping about the house they are going to be pulling down things that's because and that will be an issue that will be a problem that will cause a major clash between you and them so what you want to do you want to always make sure that they are positively engaged all the time you have activities and they are not not just spontaneous activities activities that has a goal that has an end so that they can because they are goal oriented people so they can walk towards a goal of that activity one way to actually minimize the clash between the parents and the child is to always make sure you have activities that are goal focused for them to actually draw some of those high energies they have 
So another thing about the choleric child is you want to help them create routines and structures. They love routines, they love structures. Now, one of the things you want to do for them is to teach them goal setting. When they wake up every day, they set their goals. They know exactly what they're supposed to do for the day. And not just some kind of random, random orders from everywhere, you know. No, let them understand their routines, their structure as a uh, your structure as a family and their their goals for the day. Start early. Write it for them or let them write it by themselves today. These are the things you are meant to do today. That way your, your choleric child knows exactly what to do. They know to plan that, their time. They know to give time to what you want them to do. And then they know to give time for themselves. They can be very responsible if you can do this. They can be very responsible if you can do this. So one of the things they may not readily enjoy is spontaneous or random chores or random instructions but when you have it written down communicated then trust me you are going to clash less with them if you always have your routines communicated and have their goals set for the day for your choleric child give them opportunities to lead put them in charge of themselves in charge of projects in charge of activities they love it. They have high energy and they feel they have ideas. They know a lot. That's how they feel. Actually, let them, put them in charge. In leadership, put them in charge. If you're a teacher, put them in charge of activities in the classroom, in the school. You see them, if they have, they have a lot of energy. And if it's not in use, they are going to misbehave. But if that energy is in use, you teach them leadership leadership and put them in charge you will see that your choleric child or your choleric student and you you are going to clash less just teach them leadership tell them what it means to be a leader and then put them in charge and watch how you are going to clash less choleric child don't take their freedom of self-expression away from them let them talk let them air their opinions let them share their views don't let them shut up don't hush them no if you do that and <laughs> because they are small humans, they cannot talk. A time will come, they are going to burst out and you will not like it. Now, this is where you hear, you don't too much for my papa, you don't too much for my mama. Nah, you don't want that. So don't take their freedom of expression away from them. And one thing you should know about your choleric child is you really cannot break them because that is who they are. So if you don't let them express themselves at home, they are going to go outside and they are going to express themselves in a way that you may not like. I've heard parents say, no, my child doesn't do this at home. You don't do this at home. Most times it's because you don't give them the opportunity to be free. Now, so what you want to do is to, I know they can be blunt. I know they can be very straightforward. So what you want to do is to begin to teach them about leadership, communication, diplomacy, Teach them. You can have a list of do not say and a list of say this instead. You can have that list and you keep teaching them. You teach them emotional intelligence. Yes, you are feeling it this way. You don't have to say it exactly the way you are feeling it. There are always alternative ways to express yourself and pass the same message without really um, stepping on toes and hurting people. So you actually want to take the fact that they are very expressive as a moment to always teach them and never, ever hush your choleric child. Those are some of the needs of your choleric child. Some of the needs that if not met, you are likely going to clash. Some of the reasons why you, you may clash with your choleric child. Now let's look at how to modify behaviors when they misbehave. What do you do? Now I always say instead of thinking of how to modify behaviors, you actually want to think how to prevent misbehaviors. Now one of the things you want to do, like I suggested earlier, is to set clear expectations. Your choleric child has to know exactly what is expected of him or her and the best way to do that is always to have a meeting talk to your choleric child have his or her input agree this is how things want I mean, this is what you think or rather this is what you want things to be and they will bring their inputs i always say that you can manipulate their system they feel they are in charge meanwhile you are in charge a typical example would be you want to take your choleric out for child for shopping and you don't want them to, you want them to pick their own clothes to show that they are in charge. At the same time, you want to, you want to monitor the kind of clothes they will pick. You can take them to a, a supermarket, for example, a boutique that has decent clothing collections. That is the first thing you want to do. Another thing you want to do is you can 
restrict their movement in the in the hall or in the shop to where you where they have decent clothes you want them to pick from or you can even talk, work with the attendants to make sure to tell the attendant the kind of clothes you want your children to wear to pick and things like that and another thing is you would have also had your values in the house that you have promoted a long time that would have made them program their mind to see things in certain way to want to pick the kind of clothes that actually align with your family values so at the end of the day they think they are in charge after all they are the ones picking their clothes but you are the one in charge because you actually restrict their choices to certain clothing and they can't just pick random clothes so actually you want to um set your expectations create your expectations make sure your com your choleric child is aware of it you want to have a meeting you want to agree another thing you want to do is you want to use natural and logical consequences for your choleric child you want to you don't want them to feel that oh because you are the parents you are just um you are punishing them unfairly or you, it's because you are the parent that is why you are doing what you are doing no you, when it comes to natural and logical consequences it's almost as if you call it upon yourself you had the choice you know, like a child not wanting to eat and staying hungry, or for example, like a child choosing not to um not to cover up properly when it's a cold weather and catching a cold. You know, these are consequences that the child cannot hold you responsible for. They cannot blame you for. So you want to make sure that there are consequences. Or oh, another example would be your child jumping about. You tell him stop jumping about, and then your child jumps about, and your child spoil and um, falls. That is, a lo that is a natural consequence. Another consequence can be, remember I said, you always talk, you communicate with your choleric child. Remember you have communicated with your child, you have said I mean, consequences. You have told him that if, because you are always jumping about the house, you play football in the living room, if you break the television, you are going to pay. Pay with your allowances, pay with your savings, pay with your earnings or anything. That is a consequence. It's logical. You make a mess, you fix it. That is another one. Your child breaks something and he pays with your heart. Maybe your child has a business he's doing or something. He pays. That is a logical consequence. So that way he will not feel you are forcing them to do things. No. They called for it. They had a choice. They choose. The, they, they picked anyone. The one they picked had a consequence and they are going with the consequence. So you want to make sure your consequences are very logical or natural. Now, the choleric child also has a specific way they learn. They have specific ways they love to be loved. They have specific ways you can actually connect with them. I have a book on this, Understanding Your Child. is a whole book that will teach you all those things. And secondly, for pack parents, we can continue the conversation in the community. So when you have any questions or if you have any questions on how they learn and all of that, you can acts in the community and lastly again we are also going to do a video on learning style hopefully hopefully we cover every aspect of temperament and their learning style or rather how each temperament learns in our class on learning style so i'll stop here today on your choleric child and all you need to know about him you can get my book to further the conversation you can join our parenting accountability community actually this video is one of the things we have for this month talking about temperament so you can join our parenting accountability community is a community where parents with a vision come together to set the goals that will lead to their vision and smash their goals it is a subscription community but it is totally totally very affordable you want to join our community we give you a lot of a lot of we, we are work, working you through emotions to become emotional emotionally intelligent parents we help you create your parenting framework you create your parenting vision is a lot you gain from joining the community and they will have daily discussions in the community they will have periodic um, meetings in the community too so the community you certainly want to join again if you enjoyed this video please do where to subscribe do where to share like leave a comment and most especially if you have a question ask in the comment section Thank you so much for doing this with me. My name is Enemy Rebel. See you next time. Bye-bye.